Today I'm going to depart from a standard sermon format because we are very close to that significant time of the year called annual meeting where we focus on a word that, where's George? George loves, called stewardship. Wonderful word. And George has, has tried and continues to try to teach the session and the congregation the meaning of the word stewardship. And basically it comes down to what, George? Commitment. In just money, to life in general. Couldn't, couldn't be better if I primed you ahead of time for that. Say that one more time. Well, I'm going to sit down now and let George carry on with the rest of the He's doing very, very well. Each of you received a little booklet. We're going to have a look at this today as a bit of a chat about one part of stewardship, one, I think, very exciting part of stewardship. We are focused, we'll be talking next week in the annual meeting about how much we have to spend on light, heat, and power, and all those things. And their stewardship as well, that's part of what God has given us, this beautiful building to worship in. But I want to focus particularly, using this little booklet, in terms of appreciating stewardship of our gifts, the stewardship of our hands to two hugely important mission projects that we support out of our budget. One is Presbyterians sharing, and we're going to define these as we go along. The second is Presbyterian world service and development. Two crucially important and very exciting aspects of the stewardship of this congregation and the stewardship of Presbyterians all across Canada. If you're to open the booklet to the start, it reminds us right off the top, the title on the opening page, defines stewardship for us. That clearly, as George has indicated in an excellent statement about stewardship, it's not just about money. The theme for stewardship through Presbyterian sharing this year isn't about money at all. It's about money and so much more. Proclaiming Christ in word and deed. That is the magnificent definition of stewardship if I ever saw one. Open the book with me for a second. Just beside the native dancer is a Presbyterian sharing definition. It goes like this. It is the National Church Fund that supports the mission and ministries we do together in Canada and around the world. Presbyterians are sharing in a wide range of ministries from encouraging and equipping congregational renewal and development to supporting inner city, native, refugee, urban, remote, and chaplaincy ministries in Canada to sending mission personnel and to work with international partners. Together, we make mission and ministry happen. I think the, word, the key word there in terms of a definition of stewardship is together. We do what we can here within this congregation in Tweedsmere. And we'll look at a Presbyterian sharing budget next week of around $18,000. Is it a little bit more than that? Pretty close to that, I think. We'll look at a budget for Presbyterian World Servant Development to try to hopefully encourage the same response we had last year of about 7,500, I believe it was. We were very pleased with that. In fact, let me just say something about that right off, because we received an email from the Presbytery this week listing all the congregations in terms of what they gave to Presbyterian service and development. And surprisingly enough to me, we were by far the most generous congregation in the whole Presbytery for PWS and D by almost $1,000. And I think that is tremendous. It says a lot about the heart of this congregation. But we think about what we can do ourselves. But together, as this definition for stewardship all across Canada, within the whole of the Presbyterian Church in Canada, reminds us, is together we can do so much more. And I'm excited to see what's on the bottom of that first page. It talks about the goal for this coming year of 10272500 exciting to see that in this past year, the Presbyterians all across Canada together actually gave 11 million. They passed the budget. And that hasn't happened for years in the Presbyterian Church in Canada. It's very exciting for me to see that. And to see as well that together, all across Canada, Presbyterians gave to Presbyterian World Service and Development 2.6 million. 2.6 million. That's incredible. That's over and above 
the allocations required as requested through Presbyterians sharing. Flipping over to the next page, you get a little sense of where that 11 million, and obviously we're talking about a lot more money than just Tweedsmere produces or gathers or shares out of your own generosity. But that 11 million is divvied up into approximately five areas, but the first and greatest amount to almost 70% of the total of that 11 million goes to the Life and Mission Agency that does what we traditionally understand as mission, both in Presbyterian sharing, Presbyterian World Service development at home in Canada, as well as internationally. And as well tied into that 70% are all the program, the national programs of peace and justice, uh, communication, church vocations, planning, stewardship. All of that lumped together is 70%, and then and I'm going to talk mainly about that for just a few moments this morning. And then there's four other categories that are basically the things that make a national denomination work. I think that I need to reinforce for a second. Perhaps many of us think about the Presbyterian Church in Canada in terms of these four walls. What happens in the Tweedsmere Choir, or what happens in the Tweedsmere WMS, or the Tweedsmere Session, or Tweedsmere Worship on Sunday mornings. But we are so much more than that as a national denomination. And I think we need to be more proud about that and more excited about that than often we are. We look around Orangeville and we say, oh, Orangeville Baptist, well, that's a really big congregation. But Orangeville Baptist is an independent, singular congregation. I don't think Orangeville Baptist produces $11 million. I, I doubt very much that they do, even though they're doing great work. But together, all Presbyterians in Canada raising that kind of amount and doing national programs that support all of us. So let's look at some of those national projects and mission projects that are described in this little booklet. First of all, the ones that happen in Canada. The cute little kids saying thank you with their posters is really a touching one. I had a chance to meet, I don't know, maybe these children, maybe some of their, uh, some of their parents or some of their older siblings when I had a visit as moderator a number of years ago into inner city Winnipeg in the, one of the most hardcore, violent, gang-infested areas in all of Canada. The Presbyterian Church in Canada had an exciting and dynamic children and family ministry called Wickham, Winnipeg Inner City Mission. Unfortunately, they have to meet in a building that looks more like a bomb shelter than a, than a, a place of worship and uh, uh, Christian education, Sunday school, vacation, Bible school, but there they are in the midst of this very tough part of Winnipeg doing a ministry for Christ. That's one of the areas that your work through Presbyterian Sharing works on. It's mainly a native ministry. The major, far majority of the inner city in Winnipeg is dominated by native peoples experiencing real hardships, both adults and children, families and individuals. And so Wickham is a tremendously significant Presbyterian Church in Canada ministry right in the midst of inner city Winnipeg. And they're saying with their little sign to you folk here in Tweedsmere, thank you for your support of what we're receiving. What we do across Canada is divided up into five different categories to try to understand and support all that is needed in our country. They're divided into new ministries, New ministries described in the top right-hand side of this page uh, in Keswick. Keswick's not too far from here, fairly close to, I think, where Grace uh, Patterson lives, near Sutton. But in Keswick, they decided to build a brand new Presbyterian church, amalgamate a few churches around that area, and the minister in that church is a, is a husband and wife team, Kirk and Allison McLeod, and they make this comment about that new ministry that's being funded nationally by Presbyterian sharing. We believe Keswick is the home, a place where people can come as they are, but leave changed by the love they experience. Just around the corner from us in Keswick, about an hour from here, new ministry is happening because of your generosity, your stewardship. In inner city Toronto is a very challenging area and ministry, again, which is exciting, called the Boarding House Ministry, led by Reverend Roger Hunter. There's a little paragraph here that talks that's Roger's description of what goes on at the boarding house. This gathering together of people otherwise would be on the streets of Toronto into a series of boarding houses. As Boarding Homes Ministry enters its 17th year, we thank, we thank all those who have made our gatherings possible. We pray that more loving communities will be nurtured as congregations, develop teams of visitors to join with residents 
of local homes, local boarding homes. They become a place of safety and security for those street people, and you're supporting them in this venture. There's a picture here of two young ladies in inner city, uh, in the refugee district of inner city Montreal. Not sure how many of us know Montreal at all, but most of the refugees that come into Canada come through the port of Montreal. And many of them fa have faced tremendous difficulties and, and uh, stress and anxiety to get to that place in their escape from harm and violence and conflict all over the world. And meeting them on the docks of those refugee ships in Montreal is Glennis Williams. Actually, she's now moved on to a, another position in head office and her replacement is yet to be picked. But Glennis has been in this refugee ministry for many years, doing outstanding work with very troubled uh, anxious, stressed out people who have made their way to Canada to find a new beginning. And Glennis writes these words about the refugee ministry, refugee, uh, action refugee, obviously in French language in Montreal. She says these words, now it is a good time to speak up on behalf of the refugees and the Lord God will bless us for intervening against this injustice, the injustice they experience before coming to Canada. Perhaps very few of us knew about this area of ministry. I think the WMS are going to be studying a bit about Action Refugee in the coming year as they focus on that very unique and important ministry of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. But another area that perhaps many of us, again, are not aware of is that uh, we could do more of this, but we are sponsoring at least uh, eight to ten university chaplains all across Canada. I think one is at University of Guelph, if I'm not mistaken, Liz. These, these uh, chaplains are not totally funded by Presbyterian sharing, but perhaps in conjunction with other denominations, many, many universities across Canada have chaplains, and we are engaged in sponsoring them. The University of New Brunswick campus minister, uh, Re uh, Reverend Kevin Bork, is a Presbyterian, and he writes a little comment there. All across Canada, we are doing work stewardship changing lives, building new beginnings, working with native peoples. That is stewardship. That is Presbyterians sharing. The second part of mission that is done by Presbyterian sharing is the overseas, the international work. And if you flip over to the next page, mission and ministry around the world. The first comment that's made is by uh, Todd Statham, Reverend Dr. St Todd Statham, who is in Malawi at the present time engaged primarily in education. It's hard for us to appreciate in Canada, in North America, in the West, the level of education that we have so freely given to us, the opportunities to learn and to grow. And all of our ministers in, Presby in the Presbyterian Church in Canada have been able to go to university, to theological seminary or beyond. And that's a wonderful thing, that we have education so freely in Canada. But in the third world, in Africa, in Malawi, in Ghana, and many of the places where we've had traditional mission work for many, many years. Education among the, the clergy is very poor. They can't afford it largely. When they can, it's very expensive and very demanding. And so much of the work that we do in the third world in international missions is educationally based. There's a little comment from uh, Dr. Statham that says this, one of the greatest challenges faced by church leadership in southern African countries where he works in Malawi, is born of the gospel's stunning success in their region. And how will this massive and growing generation of new congregations be educated? And so one of the things, one of the primary things we do in sending missionaries out to the third world is to work in educational realms. When Jane and I went to Ghana, the uh, a team of Canadian educators had just left Ghana. Sadly, that particular minister passed away shortly after and have not been replaced. And if the funding were available, that position could be renewed. The challenge comes out to all of us. What does Presbyterian sharing on an international level look like? There's a little definition here, I think, that sums up the categories that we are engaged in. Through gifts to Presbyterian sharing, the Presbyterian Church in Canada is working with international partners in 27 different countries around the world. 22 mission staff, full-time and their spouses, as well as short-term volunteers, support and accompany our mission partners. 51 grants support church partners in leadership development, 
Bible translation, Christian education, theological education, and evangelism. It's exciting to realize that we here at Tweedsmere are connected to 27 countries around the world. Not just us, but us together with Presbyterians all across Canada. We here at Tweedsmere are funding 22 mission staff, missionaries in some form or another, whether it's medical, whether it's educational, whether it's traditional worship, whether it's traditional evangelism. One of the missionaries that we sponsor is uh, Dr. Rick Allen. He's a medical doctor, a surgeon. He's been working in Kenya most of his uh, missionary, medical missionary career. He writes this little comment, and again, awakens us to parts of mission sponsorship that we, we perhaps don't hear enough about. It's through effective partnership, Rick writes, that a good education program has been developed and implemented. An excellent policy was written in order to address the problems of HIV, AIDS, in Kenya. Not just traditional work. This is exciting new ventures that Rick's involved with in terms of medical missions. One of the things, and I think Brandon represents this in denominations and Christian organizations all over the world these days, and that's youth volunteers. Brandon's organization in, that he's going to be working with in Australia is Youth with Mission. Within the Presbyterian Church in Canada, we have a very similar program called Youth in Mission that sends out volunteers, young volunteers, young adults, and there's pictures in the uh, right-hand pages of uh, international uh, ministries of two of these young adult missionaries that go out. One is uh, Jeanette Yanakowski, Jeanette, the, her, Jeanette's uh, mother is a uh, Presbyterian minister, she's just graduated, and uh, this is her daughter who writes about going on a mission trip to the Middle East. I really enjoy the opportunity to travel in Israel and Palestine and experience the culture, conflict, tension, and history. One part Christian pilgrimage and one part seeing the difficult political situation. The Sabeel trip provided the opportunity to work where Jesus walked, but also to come and see the situation of the Palestinian people. Mary Gormley writes this about her youth in mission experience in Hungary. I feel blessed that now I have the chance to help improve the lives of children throughout the scholarship programs of the Hungarian Reformed Church Aid Office. Mary's comment, I think, reminds us of how important it is to understand we do mission in the Presbyterian Church in Canada in partnership. We here at Tweedsmere don't try to go out and find our own missionaries and do it all ourselves. We do it in partnership with Presbyterians all across Canada, but also with partners all across the world, so that when we discover there's a need within the Hungarian Reformed Church, which is a Presbyterian type of church, we work with them. We don't create our own project. We work with local congregations in Hungary, or in Palestine, or in Israel, or in Malawi, or Kenya. One of the things that comes very close to home for me is a picture of this very uh, big bearded individual in the middle of that next page. Paul McLean was a classmate of mine at Knox College, and his wife and my wife Jane are good friends, have been for 30-some years now. But ever since uh, Paul graduated from Knox College, went on to get his doctorate in Old Testament, he has committed himself to one area of ministry and been sponsored by the Presbyterian Sharing. And that's the translation of a Hakka Bible for the Aboriginal people of the mountain areas in Taiwan. Guess who one of those uh, Taiwanese gentleman is that's been touched by Paul's work. Anybody remember the name Sidney Chang? And Sidney's picture is on the next page. Don't get ahead of me. But that comes very close to us at Tweedsmere to have no one. I'm not sure if Sidney was Hakka or if he was uh, uh, well, exactly what his ethnic background was, but he certainly would know all. He would know Paul personally. He would know what he's doing in the past 30 some years very personally as well. One of the challenges, I think, in understanding stewardship and the work of missions that we do as Presbyterians are these two words that sound so close. And there's a little paragraph here at the bottom that tries to help us out in that. Presbyterians sharing and Presbyterian world service development. Presbyterians sharing is traditionally what we've called mission over the years. And some years ago in the Ethiopian conflict, <coughs> Canadian Presbyterians wanted to give specifically to a needy refugee war conflict situation. And so we created an addendum to Presbyterian sharing called Presbyterian World Service and Development. 
which works strictly with conflict situations, food, development, those kind of challenges. Doesn't provide missionaries or evangelism or direct contact or mission work in that sense. But they are both integrated. Let me just read a little bit of the definition of these. Presbyterian sharing is the national church fund that supports overall mission and ministry in the Presbyterian Church in Canada. PWS and D, Presbyterian World Service Development, is the Presbyterian Church in Canada's development and relief agency. Raises funds directly from congregations and individuals. Also receives grants very generously from CEDA. Your bullet today describes one of those areas of mission, one of those areas of sharing that Presbyterian World Service and Development is engaged in. I'll let you read it. It talks specifically about how we are engaged in Afghanistan. Did you know that you were involved with Afghanistan? We hear about it all the time. The war, the conflict, the desperate situation. Through the work of Presbyterian World Service and Development, we are there in the midst of Afghanistan. That's partly where our $7,500 budget is going to. I think we should be proud about that. We should be excited about it. And thirdly, there's the whole area of national programs. We here at Tweedsmere can't do everything ourselves. Sometimes perhaps we try to. But when we do it in conjunction, do what we do in conjunction with Presbyterians all across Canada and with the help of a national office with program staff, it truly is amazing what we are able to do. There's a picture there, and now we get to Sydney's picture, my predecessor here at Tweedsmere, <coughs> sending, again, youth out to other parts of the world to engage as volunteers in youth and mission projects. Left-hand side here shows Sydney in a golf shirt with a group of Taiwanese young people who were hosts to a group of Canadian young people that went over to Taiwan last year because of the assistance, the financial support of Presbyterians sharing. Sydney, if you, did, if you were perhaps wondering where he's gone since he was last here at Tweedsmere, is now uh, living and working in the Taiwanese Presbyterian Church as a program person, does a lot of translation, um, and he's back here in Vancouver at this present, present time. Exciting to see what we are involved with. Again, by doing things together. Together we sponsor students to go to three of our colleges that are placed across Canada in Montreal and Toronto and Vancouver. Together we do things like have national youth programs and there's a picture of a young fellow there looking very excited and understandably so. Canada Youth has been a tremendously successful national program that has allowed young people from all across Canada to come together Every, and now it's every two years, it's become so popular, it's gone from, I think, every four years to every three, and now it's down to every two years, because the young people enjoy it so much and get so much out of it. That's one of our national programs. As someone said who attended the last Canada Youth, it gives me strength knowing other people believe the same things that I do. Zachary, who went to Canada Youth. And finally, I just want to finish up with the challenge that you find on the last page. Stewardship is getting involved. Not just with your money, but with your whole life, your whole commitment. And the end of this booklet, I think, has some very helpful ways that we individual Presbyterians sitting in our pews here in Orangeville can get involved, can be stewards of God's resources. We can support Presbyterian sharing. I guess that's what this talk is all about to some extent. We can connect with our mission partners. That's what Brandon is doing by going to Australia, not with the Presbyterian Church, the same idea. How can we build on that? How can we make perhaps more connections with Sydney and help him come and talk about work in Taiwan, perhaps? I know John Meek over the years has done some wonderful things in terms of bringing third world partners here to Tweedsmere. We need to do more of that. We need to develop our own skills by relying on the national programs that are available. We have one of the most vibrant WMS programs, I think, anywhere in Ontario, here in Tweedsmere. They're strong and they're healthy because they've connected with something outside of us here. And it's a wonderful thing to see. Picture of the young people gathering together at Canada Youth. Again, to encourage our young people to see the connections can be so much greater than just what they find here with three young people sitting at the soundboard. And you get that kind of grouping of kids together from all across Canada. It truly is an exciting thing. Become an advocate, get involved with some of the national programs, participate in General Assembly. And if you flip over the last page, I think the definition of stewardship is right there portrayed for us. 
a young man getting together. I know this lady, but I can't remember a name right off. George, if you recognize her. Um, but it's the definition for stewardship that comes to my mind. As God sent Christ to us, so Christ sends us into the world. We are here to proclaim Christ in word and in deed. That is stewardship. That is Presbyterian sharing. That is what we are called to be about and to be. Let us pray.